What do you get when you mix a sentient beanbag with a pair of glasses? That's right, Colt from 90 Day Fiance. And as I've done so many times on this channel, it's been over 90 days, I think it's time to finally revisit this man. A T? He's not changed. This is finally part 3. Part 3 of a 3 part series that's now gonna have a part 4 because I just realized they have another season. But we're looking at the most recent relationship Colt has been in with a girl called Vanessa. And if you haven't followed the series, 90 Day Fiance is wild. It is a show about couples who are very, very mismatched, who get involved too fast, and then they run into a myriad of problems and have to figure those out. In this case, we're talking about Colt, a man who I've said before looks like a croissant with a face. Ah! Stop! I could have dropped my croissant! who somehow manages to get goals way above his batting average and I still cannot figure it out. My one thought is that he has a magic dong and that is it. It's curing something. Polio. I don't know. Anyway, he seems to be getting goals by the dove. I don't know how. And he's cheating on them. Not only is he getting the goals, which as it is, is like, I don't know, you must have a magic lamp. You must have genie from Aladdin there granting you wishes. But even then, he's still cheating on them and managing to mess it up. And today we're going to look at his newest relationship with a girl called Vanessa. Because if you've been following my series, which you should, the first person he dated was a woman called Larissa. The second person was a woman called Jess. Both Brazilians, both firecrackers of women. They both let him have it because he was not really a good guy to them. And he also cheated on the most recent relationship he was in with Jess. The person he cheated with is actually the person he ended up with now. Vanessa. <laughs> 90 Day Fiance. What? That should be the tagline. <laughs> By the way, he's also got a mom who's so protective and controlling and also <laughs> weird towards him that I half the time thinks he wants to date her. Look, man, it's a show of biblical proportions, but I am here for it. And I know this is probably the only time you're ever going to see me in a bandana and a beanie. I don't think that's a combination that exists much in life. But if you like it, let me know by hitting me up at 16leo underscore on my Instagram. And also, if you like the 90 Day Fiance series and want to see more, please consider subscribing. We're on our way to 500,000 subscribers. And when we do, I will kick my friends not. <laughs> I will write a wool for myself. I will smut slap somebody's ass. Okay, you know what? I will do something for 500k. Can you give me an idea? I don't really know. And now, a quick ad break from my favorite sponsor, Raycon. Today, Professor Leo is going to teach you about a really cool feature found on Raycon earbuds. You can actually swap between two different modes. Noise isolation mode and awareness mode. Noise isolation mode, or what I like to call mind your business mode, does just that. Locks out noises outside the earbuds so you can hear what's playing much clearer. Awareness mode, or what I like to call no, eavesdropping no, mode, allows some outside noise in, which is perfect Jeremy. if you're doing errands, looking no, after no, kids, no, or no, trying to overhear a juicy conversation. No, and their optimized gel tips will ensure these earbuds will not budge. So I can eavesdrop confidently knowing my cover won't get blown. With 8 hours of continuous playtime on a single charge, plus a 32 hour battery life when you use its charging case, I'm set up to listen for hours without worry of running out of battery. Compared to other premium audio brands, Raycons come in at around half the cost. There are over 49,000 five-star reviews. Check them out for yourself. Visit buyraycon.com 16leo for 15% off your order today. Thanks, Raycon. So as I've said, Colt, 90 Day Fiance, all you need to know about him if you don't know is big dude, big appetite, big sex drive, also tends to cheat on people. Is he a good guy? Not really. Is he entertaining? Hell yes. And I think I'm ready to see the journey of him going to the next person because I just don't know how he gets them. All right, let's take a look. My name is Colt. I'm 35 years old and I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Ah, as we've all said, he has the best face to body ratio in the world. His face, if you didn't see his body, looks like normal man's face. Very beautiful man. His body looks like a pear. Shout out to all the pear. I don't know what kind of ratio this man does, but I would love the routine. Drop the face routine, man. I would love to see how you do it. He also looks like a flamboyant bandit from GTA 5. I, I don't know. This happened during a lockdown and, you know, he's wearing the bandanas everywhere. I just find it hilarious how he chooses the funniest colors I've ever seen. He just looks like he's going to rob somebody but happy about it. Like, give me your money. Come on. Do it. I lost my job. I lost a bunch of weight. 
but I'm still single. We are so happy to have you here for our speed dating event. So, as we picked off in the last one, Jess and Colt, they had a fight to end their relationship. Jess said he was cheating, she did not like him, and as usual, Colt didn't really know what to do and said, maybe this isn't working. He also admitted to basically having an affair with another woman. So, what we have on our hands is a cheetah, cheetah, pumpkin eater. Cheetah, cheetah, ass eater <laughs> would be the more equivalent. Lion, but anyway. <laughs> My name is Cole. Yeah, I'm Sarah, pleased to meet you. Do you have a type? I'm all over the place. No, 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 he's not all over the place. He likes Brazilian women who are firecrackers. In fact, the first person he married, he did it after five days. Colt is a very uh, passionate person. He acts out of love or lust or both maybe. And this might be the downfall of him. Now, I've talked about a lot of people on 90 Day Fiance, but this man really is an enigma. Like he shouldn't have the confidence that he does, but at the same time, it's too much confidence on one hand, I'm happy for him. Everybody should feel confident and happy about your own body. Great. There's no problem there. But then as soon as he gets a goal, he's like, I get bored of her. And he starts cheating. And my question is always, with who? Who is looking at this man like, damn, this is a sexy man. He looks like the person from Ghostbusters, the the Michelin man. I, don't... I was married, divorced after six months. Three and a half years ago, I met a Brazilian named Larissa. Larissa was the first woman I was in love with. I really thought I found my soulmate. I mean, did you, Colt? This is the problem with lust and love, isn't it, guys? Everybody thinks that they found their soulmate because you're, like, attracted to them physically. It's like, you gotta be emotionally attracted as well. And I'm not saying that, you know, that's not enough time, but if you meet someone and after, like, five days, you're like, this is the person. I think you need to wait a little longer because Colt waited five days and was like, I'm gonna propose. I have forgotten to text someone after five days and be like, oh, and then never text them again. Because after five days, you might as well just, that that's over. That's gone. That's gone. <laughs> You're never getting that person back. I spent five days with Larissa in person. And after that, I proposed to her. Larissa broke my heart. Well, you know, you shouldn't have proposed. I don't know who gets a ring after five days. I appreciate the enthusiasm. I'm sure it's a really romantic idea. As soon as I met her. I knew she was the one for me. Yeah, but you don't even know her last name called. <laughs> Larissa Bombissa? Larissa Brizzle? That's not, no. That's not a last name called. And also, I know that you only liked her because of her A and T's, okay? Ass and titties. Come on. You didn't have nothing in common with her. She didn't have anything in common with you. Why did she even like you? Did you ever think about that? You dress like you trade stocks for a living. I moved on to another woman named Jess, who happened to also be Brazilian. Ooh, sexy boy! Sexy boy! Oh god, that's... don't remind me. When in Brazil, do as the Brazilians do. Yeah, but don't, that's the girls wear bikinis, man, not the guy. Oh god, why would you do this to my eyes, brother? Brother, <laughs> why? It's like saying, when in Africa, do what the African people do and you start doing clicking noises, bro. This is not right. This is wrong, son. Don't do it. Do what Brazilians do and dance. Do other things that Brazilians do, don't. That is a beautiful body cult. Thank, yeah, you, you deserve this. I did lie to Jess. Even though Vanessa and I did start as friends, we ended up having an affair. So there is the problem with my main man, Colt, is that as much as you want to love him and be like, hey, he's a good dude, man. I don't think anybody thinks that. <laughs> because unfortunately, this man cannot seem to commit to someone. And there is nothing wrong with banging people. There's nothing wrong with having 20 people that you, you know, have your rotation called. I don't care. But when you have a girlfriend, you can't be doing that unless she knows about it. Unless you all have that relationship and she knows about it. Otherwise, you're just hurting that person. So like, yeah, don't do that. I cheat on Jess with Vanessa. You know, I write all the time. You liar, you liar. And your mom help you lie, and Vanessa help you lie. I can't even get one girlfriend. How is I just... He got three. I didn't, I didn't even get one. I, didn't, I got a bandana on. I'm like, what's up in the club? They kicked me out. They're like, this is not a club. This is a library. I don't... How do people even cheat with him? I thought he would get cheated on before he cheated with someone. I'm sorry, Colt. I just... You're just defying laws of gravity right now, bro. 
Oh, you're defying all logic. <laughs> and he cheated on his girlfriend, Jess. It's wrong. It's horrible. I have nothing else to say about that. Don't cheat on people, please. I would definitely say Jess was a rebound. I rushed into that like I was rushing into a burning building to save a baby or something. Well, that's not exactly what it was. I rushed into that relationship like a heroic firefighter who saved seven people that day and then laid them down and gave them CPR to the, to the hot girls, but not the guys because I don't swing that way. <laughs> Why do you make it sound like a heroic thing? What actually happened was... I shouldn't have done that. I needed a rebound. I used her as a rebound. Didn't tell her I used her. She caught feelings and I was cheating. Damn. That's really sucky, man. This girl for what she was just was really a loud person. She did some things that were wrong, but you should have let her know. Like if you can, I always say like, you know, when I start a relationship or something, I say like, if you ever feel like there's someone else better for you out there or you feel those feelings, tell me beforehand. I'm not going to be mad. Because you at least told me, you brought it up before you did it. I don't want to find out any other way, and I do the same thing. If that's the case, I'll tell you, I'll let you know. But communication is key, okay? And Colt seems to be the worst at communicating. I think it's time to start dating again. I am a... Anyway, sorry, back to the actual main plot. Colt has been out of the relationship game for a while, and he is dating again. He is done with Jess, he's done with Larissa. He's now back on the grind trying to get someone to grind on him. And he's doing speed dating. Dog trainer and canine handler. Oh, wow. I'm uh, 35 years old, divorced. I've never done speed dating, but I assume uh, if I did, it would be something like, hey, I was 16 Leo, got a YouTube channel from Africa, so you know, you know down below the belt. Okay, um, uh, no kids, would like some. <laughs> With you, baby, perhaps. Uh, condom size, don't even use it. Uh, Favorite condiment? Mustard, you bustard. And uh, do I have any dogs? Just one. That's it. Just don't. Here's the things that you shouldn't mention. Oh, have ex wife, divorced that, uh, cheated in relationship, blah, 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 convicted felon. Not on the first speed date, maybe. Wait till the second one. First date things are supposed to be feeling the person out, not up. You know what I mean? Ah, you're an ass man. <laughs> Why do I feel like this woman is staring through my soul as well? Ah, you're an ass man. <laughs> He's the genuine look of shock and concern on his face. What about you? What's your history? I am divorced. Me too. Okay, yeah. yeah. The way he said it, I am divorced. Me too! Oh my god! Divorcee! No kids. I have uh, fur babies, though. I have two Dobermans. I got fur babies. Okay, well, have that. Six cats. Oh, jeez. It's, it's almost as if Larry David wrote this. This is funnier than Cub Your Enthusiasm. How many... I got fur babies. Oh, you do? How many dogs? Six cats. Oh. Okay. You know when you don't connect with someone? This is it. Would you date Colt? Uh, I would not date Colt uh, at all. Uh, yeah, no. No, 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 no. Are you hopeful you got some matches? I'm very hopeful. So the first time we see Colt in a long time, he's speed dating. He's trying to get himself back into the game, and you can't hate on anybody who's trying. So, hey, man, good on you for trying. I also think the girl that he last talked to was a bit mean because she was like, uh, would you date Colt? And not only did she say no, she was like, no, 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 he sucks. And uh, she's just letting him have it. I'm pretty sure you're going to be harta tu mama de estar ahí contigo. Just get out. Damn, you know Colt is bad when he looks up to the sky in two different angles of God, like, you suck, Colt. And he ripped his shreds over there. Vanessa is my best friend. So it's safe to say Colt is not doing well on the dating game. I don't really know how he meets girls to this day. I think that's the greatest trick, even better than any David Blaine magic, is how Colt finds girls. I'd love to know the secret behind that. Still don't. But the underlying thing is that Colt's last relationship ended because of an affair with a girl called Vanessa. The thing is, Colt still has feelings for said Vanessa, who was a married woman at the time, so they both cheated on their partners to be with each other. And you know what they say, two cheaters 
I ask you this. That's that's the correct thing. Nessa and I started to be intimate while I was still in a relationship with Jess. But do you want to pursue the next? I have asked Vanessa in the past to officially be my girlfriend, and she's always said no. So here's the problem. Vanessa says that Colt is not her type. Not really. That That's kind of a lie. Because she's still doing Friends with Benefits. And I think, maybe this is a hot take from 16 Leo over here. If you're older than 35 and you're having Friends with Benefits, you need to, you need, you need to stop. You need to stop. You know? I'm not saying there's a cutoff age. I'm not saying act your age, but friends with benefits at 35? That's lame, son. I'm sorry, man. You need to you need to figure out what to do at that age. It's a bit late for this. Whatever Vanessa is doing, whatever she's not thinking, Colt needs to get to the bottom of this. Cause that's a weird position to be in. They're still banging, but they're not doing anything more than that. And as, as good as it sounds to some guys or some girls, I think at 35, you got to have more clear communication and direction in your life, I'm assuming. Vanessa's made clear on more than one occasion that she doesn't trust me at all in terms of a relationship. Um, she knows I've cheated before. You cheated, yeah, but like it was with her. I'm, I'm sorry, I just, this is kind of a little hard to believe. I'm. Ah. So Vanessa looked at you and said, you're a cheater. And you you didn't look back at her and say, Ditto! Like my favorite Pokemon. Ditto! <laughs> it's kind of weird. I get what Vanessa's coming from. She's like, I'm scared that he's going to cheat. How come he's not scared? Like, hey, didn't you cheat on your husband with me? I... Uh, what the hell is going on, guys? Okay. I mean, that's the issue. Vanessa doesn't trust him because he's a cheater, even though she's the one who cheated with him on someone else. All right. I should be upfront with her, tell her, like, I can't be your friend anymore unless she wants to be my girlfriend or at least... No way. So Colt's main issue in this episode and in the series so far is that he wants to be more than friends with benefits with Vanessa, which in hindsight is quite a cute thing. Because he's getting everything he needs sensually, and he's still like, I... I really want more. I, I want you around, Vanessa. I want to be your man. And then we see Debbie doing the thing that she always does. F***ing it up. No, 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 Colt. You just, you just be friends with benefits. Mama knows best, and you gotta dick that lady down, right, son? Woo! <laughs> Team dick. It's just Debbie just never says the right thing ever. You gonna break up your friendship with her? Vanessa and I haven't seen each other lately. Uh, Debbie then says, are you going to break up your friendship with her? And Debbie, as usual, is wrong because, I don't know, I've never been in no friends with benefits, but I assume if if I had feelings with someone and they didn't, I, it would be too hard for me to continue that. I would at least tell them the truth. This is how I feel. If you don't feel the same way, let's uh, cut it off and I really apologize. So, yeah. But Colt listens to himself which is probably good in this situation, and says, I'm going to tell Vanessa and meet her at a coffee shop the next day. Because I realize the more I'm with her, the more I spend time with her, the more I want to be with her. I want to kiss her, I want to hold her hand, and I definitely want more than just friendship. That is very cute. I gotta say, Colt, he's turning over a new leaf, and this time, I'm with it. I'm for it, Colt. Vanessa, how you doing? Good, how are you? Ah, we take that all back, right? Just take it all back. My bad. It's, it's over. What the hell was that? Have you ever seen a hug more awkward than that? I'd like to hold you like some groceries that I'm about to drop before coming into my house. Oh! Sorry about that. That's just how I hug people. We spend a lot of time together. I mean, it does get intimate sometimes, but we're friends with benefits. So you're dating again. Well, you know, I'd like to date you. What to tell you? Nice. Colt actually does a really cool thing here and just comes clean. He asks Vanessa, is she dating? She says, yup, sort of, but I don't know anyone who I'd really get with. And Colt's like, well, I'd like to date you. Why won't you date me? So pretty good move. Bold, honest, to the point. That's a point for Colt. Why don't you want to date me? I'm good. Well, now it's... Go okay. We spend all of our time together. You love being around me. Why don't you want to date me? He started off so nicely. 
I thought he was playing the smooth. When Colt and I first met, he seemed like a good guy. He's a bit of a liar. There's a few women that rotate in his life, so. He's got a rotation. This man's got a rotation of chicks. Snoop Dogg, baby, like rappers have rotation. I don't, how big is his dong, man? What is, what am I missing? Girls, ladies, can you please in the comment section, can someone tell me what I might be missing out in cult? What is, what is they seeing in him? Because I cannot see it. And I would like to know the secret, the secret cult. Please tell me the secret of how you do it. When he's asked me to be his girlfriend, I always say no. I care about you. I know. What's your problem? You just don't trust me? <laughs> this is the classic cult special. He'll say something somewhat sweet and follow it up with the most douchiest sentence of all time. He's a douchebag, yo. It's just, it's just like the most confrontational stuff. And you know that's not healthy when they're fighting because this is not even when they're fighting. This just sort of shows you how much of a toddler this man can be when he doesn't get his way. And that's a common theme in Colt's faults in his relationship because he doesn't get his way with things. He constantly makes things worse. When he's not hanging out with a girl and she's hanging out with her friends, he hates it. He could get jealous easy. There are so many things that he's not aware of and not willing to fix, but expects the other person to fix, which is bad. No, no, no. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, anyway, Vanessa's like, yeah, that, that would be why I don't trust you because you cheat and I don't trust you. And that is how that scene ends. The next day, Colt wakes up and has breakfast with his mama, Debbie. What are you doing? Making a dump cake. A dump cake? Yeah. What's a dump you cake? You all the ingredients and you just dump it in there? A dump cake. <sighs> I'm gonna make a piss cake. I put some really nice things in it. Um, and the scent pisses other people off, so it's a piss cake. Uh, last week I told Vanessa that I want a relationship with her. And she told me no, she doesn't want to date me. So I'm trying to put myself back out there. All I know about her. So anyway, uh, after the dump cake incident, Colt is like, hey, I have a date. And he finds another woman to date because Vanessa is still saying no to him and is like, I don't really trust you. So Colt puts that behind him and ventures out into the world. And he actually finds a cougar. I already have more in common with Brittany than I did with my ex-wife. Brittany. Hello, we finally meet. Hello, hello. <laughs> Come on into my... Did you need to say the word meet that long? Can we go back and how many seconds was that? Hello, we finally meet. Humble abode. I brought you a present. Oh. Thank you. I'm sorry. Why is this mother wearing cleaning gloves? Wait, is, this, is this a superhero? Is this one? He looks like a literal custom character in GTA. Why did he wear cleaning gloves that you clean showers with? My name is Brittany. I am absolutely super single, and I am the four seven. Yep, four seven. That's a, that's a goddamn. That's a nice voice. I love hearing voices that are so soothing. This is the equivalency of an alarm clock. If I heard Brittany being like, get up, I'd be like, okay. You don't have to say it ever again. I don't, I'll wake up from memory next time if you do that. You know what? I like Brittany though. She seems like a nice person. Otherwise, just that voice. I do like younger men because, well, you know, I need somebody that can keep up. So you chose Colt. You need someone who can keep up. So you chose the Muffin Man. Who lives on Lane? I just don't know if people are seeing Colt in the same way that I'm seeing him. And I don't know how he found this mulf or cougar or whatever you call her. And she's like, I like what I see. I just don't know if if 90 Day Fiance is doing it. I don't know who's doing it. But I need answers. How is he getting these dates? I don't... I would like one cougar. I would like one. Just to say it. Just to say it. But Colt, Colt is just beating me. I think I'm a spiteful person now. Brittany looks f***ing amazing. Oh god, I didn't expect that. <laughs> I thought he was gonna say something like, She looks alright for her age. But Colt was like, he, he really likes her. <laughs> this man likes the fake titties, huh? I 
I'm sorry. Bella's, you know, always got to be right next to mommy. I apologize. I don't blame her. <laughs>
I'm excited hey. to be here. <laughs> this is our first date too. Yeah. This might be your last date. But anyway, it turns out Colt actually has a plan. And that plan is to make Vanessa bungee jump with him instead of trying to marry her right there and then. Which is kind of cute. I'm, I, I'm going to give him points for creativity on that date. Did I look at the bungee jump and think they told him that he would need two harnesses? Yes. Is that mean? Yes. Is it also thoughtful? Yes. Yes, it is. All of the above. Here he comes. Three, two, one, go. Ah! Oh, oh my god, he looks like a body bag. That looked like it was tough on the ropes. If the rope had feelings, the rope would have been like, oh, damn, that looked tough. Bitch, I hate you right now. I booked on private, booked, booked, booked on private chef's dinner just for the two of us. And during the dinner, I'm going to ask Vanessa to be my girlfriend. I'd like to make you my girlfriend. Um, after the bungee jumping, he books on private, books a chef, private chef, so that they can have a small dinner with each other. Just the two of them. And uh, I, I gotta say that, you know, it's a really thoughtful date and it's really caring. It shows that this man actually cares. I think you can tell when this boy cares because he definitely puts in more of an effort with people that he actually cares about. And I also think that Colt is sort of the dude who's like, when a girl's not giving it to him, he wants it more. As many people are in life. When she's not fully giving it to him, he's like, Yeah, I, I want that. Um, but anyway, he does something nice and he, he gets her to a private place so that she can eat food. It's gonna take some time, a second date. Do something. Uh, Colt then asks once again if Vanessa will be his girlfriend. She says, not yet, I think we need a second date. To which Colt says, okay. They wake up the next morning after having sex. Do you see why I am confused at this situation? Okay, so neither of them are going to stop doing that. But Colt wants more from her, and she wants less from him. Yet they're still agreeing to meet up in the bedroom. Hey. Oh. It's a little messed up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but even says that it's his friend, it's Vanessa, 31. Colt's friend. She's still not even more than that, even in the text at the bottom. This is, a, this is just a sad situation. We're back to being friends with benefits. We're not in a relationship. I heard that Jess moved to Las Vegas and married an American after five months of knowing them. Oh, wow. So it turns out there is now a new thing on Colt's mind. He realizes that his ex, Jess, is now married to another American guy after only five months of knowing them. Ugh. Only five months? I mean, pfft. At least it's not five days. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you lied to her a lot. They decide, for some reason, to meet Jess and the new partner to say sorry, to come clean because they're starting new. And on one hand, I get it. I think it's a, it's a very mature thing to do, to call up your ex and say, I'm sorry. And I think that you deserve an explanation as to what happened. On the other hand, we are dealing with Jess, Colt, and these two people. I think a phone call would have been better, but they decide that they're going to meet up for dinner. For some reason, everybody agrees to this and they do it. Even though I told Jess that I had an affair with Vanessa after I came back from Brazil, that's not exactly the reality. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, it's going to be so much worse, isn't it, Colt? Oh, Jesus Christ. If you were hiding the affair and that wasn't the worst part, what is? Man, this man has more secrets than the chamber from Harry Potter. The truth is, it started about a month after Jess and I started dating. Hello. How, you, how do you just drop that out? So a month after Jess and Cole started dating, he was cheating. That means every time she ever brought up the idea of Vanessa, Colt was vehemently lying about it by being like, she's just a friend, she's just a friend. Every single time. Oh, that makes him so much more douchey than I already thought. That sucks. Every time I think maybe Colt is a pretty decent guy or like can be a decent guy, I'm reminded of how much of a douchebag he actually was. If you're gonna cheat, tell someone. Just please, just please tell someone you're tempted and you might do it. You're gonna make them feel really bad and, and you're gonna feel bad about yourself. But at the end of the day, you're gonna save them five, six months of pain. Before they get in too deep, 
just do it and be like, I know that you hate me right now today, but if I tell you today, then I'm going to save you that world of hurt later. It is not unhuman or inhumane to have feelings. It's not inhumane to actually think about other people and be enticed. Everyone is made different. I'm not going to sit here and act holier than thou. But if you're going to do it, you, you owe someone the truth before so, you know? That's all I'm saying. How you guys doing? Oh my god. Oh, socially awkward as ever. So I guess they're at dinner, and it looks really awkward, and then Colt doesn't know how to say things at a normal tone, so he starts screaming. Like, what are you doing? How is everyone? How, how are you doing? So what was the wedding like? Wedding was good. So, we are actually first introduced to Jess's new partner and boyfriend, uh, sorry, husband, Brian. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say Brian has the IQ of a goldfish. Not really sure why he's as slow as he is, but he just does not seem to get things. He just needs something to get him going, but he doesn't have it. On the surface, I know, he looks like a decent looking dude, but as soon as words come out, you're like, oh. I'm surprised Colt tests me for see him. Colt is trash man, of course, and he's very manipulated, he's a liar, he's cheating, and he's very gaslight. He's manipulate, he's a liar, he's shitting, and he's a gaslight. He's all of those things. She's 100% correct. We just wanted to come here. To apologize. I lied to you. I lied to you about Vanessa. I lied to you that I was in love with her. And Colt. This pissed me off. Colt got very mad that I was sleeping with somebody else. So, so I slept with you. Uh oh, spaghetti. Uh oh, spaghetti. Mm -mm. You're telling me that the only reason Colt ever got involved with Jess was because he was jealous of Vanessa for having a partner and sleeping around? So he befriended Jess. Started a relationship with her, knowing damn well that even before he met her, he was jealous of Vanessa to the point that he got her as a rebound but didn't tell her and proceeded to have a relationship with her, lie to her, and then blame her for lying? Oh, he's a trash man. Jess is 100% right. This guy is the trashiest man. Oh my god, I didn't think it was that bad. I thought he just, like, met Vanessa after Jess. So he knew Vanessa beforehand, wanted to bang her, realized that he couldn't, and used Jess as leverage. Cleavage. Leverage. Cleverage. To piss me off. And then we started uh, having sex about a month after you guys started dating. I'm sorry, Jess. So you lied to me all the time? The whole time. The whole time. Like, as soon as we met, is your name really even Colt? No, my name is Colt. My name is Cultivation, and I cultivate not only mass, but that ass. I, I didn't ever side with Colt, but I didn't side with Jess either. Now I'm like, oh, I can understand why she's so mad. Travel to Chicago for having sex with me. I no deserve that. You fake. Your it's got to be weird for your husband to hear that stuff. I'm not fake. You're a fake. You are pretty fake. You lie about a lot of. Meet the white Brian. I'm gonna talk. Oh, uh, now we now we start with the fighting. This is always the, my favorite part. Brian and Colt, two of the most passive people going at it. You know, it looks like a before and after picture of fighting with each other, doesn't it? Colt is the before. Uh, Brian is the after. Weight loss picture. This just looks, that's what it looks like. Now you can't unsee it. Shut the f up. I'll say what the f I want. Shut the f up, mother You're really gonna scare a lot of people by saying words like that. Shut the f up, mother effer. Or I'm gonna come over there and say things to your face. Like, hmm. And then, hey. Hey, shut your shut your pie hole, beef man. What's your gravy with me, pops? I don't really understand what the whippersnappers are saying. I'm a rad dude. I'm gonna catch a wave. He sounds like a suffer, but still too dumb. And I just saw how full of shit Colt was in person. <laughs> Baby, how do you fall for that? You're new here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yo, these two are some goofy ass couple, man. Baby, how do you fall for him? <laughs> and then she moves back and her head goes as if she's been, I don't know, hit by a bullet. <laughs> God damn, what is this relationship? 
How did these two find each other? I want to know this story. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't get it. Why does he talk like that? Why does he talk like a joint smoked him? I don't get it. Baby. <laughs> This dude is crazy, man. Baby. <laughs> Just listen to the background. Baby. Baby. <laughs> it says, what the hell is that? I'm happy now. It's you. I don't have my husband today. Like, he's respect me. He's love me. He's make me orgasm. Multiple orgasm. That's uh, Jess, as usual, sharing TMI. A little spiteful thing to say. Jess is not really... A healthy person to talk to i think we can all agree that the things she says don't contribute to a healthy argument or conversation whenever jess says things a lot of it is out of spite or just to hurt the other person because she's hurt and that's not a, a good way to deal with things it's really immature but at the same time colt did do all this bad stuff so it's horrible but at the same time again he's just there to apologize they've both moved on and like just said, at the end of the day, after everything is said and done, she did manage to find the guy that she's with. So in hindsight, it's not the worst thing in the world. Yes, you may have been through some horrible relationships in your life, but if it leads you to the right person, it was probably a good part to take, wasn't it? Not everything's going to be smooth in a ride, you know? Uh, cult is the lesson for Jess, in that sense. Now that she's found baby Brian. I have this trash and I don't have any more. I have this man. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> baby. <laughs> baby. That's, I mean, like, you know, if he's trash, this man's recycling or something. I, I don't, I know that it sounds like I don't like him, and I just, I don't. I don't like Brian. And you will see why by the end of the video. He makes an appearance at the tell all, and he's just a horrible mess of a human. I just don't like this person. I actually like Coltimore. I think he's funny. So. If you think you go give a chance, good luck. I hope it is work. At the end of the day, Jess says, if you really think that you guys want to do it, then I wish you the best regardless. And that is their interaction in the series Untold the Tell All, which is kind of nice. After that, Colt and Vanessa then decide to take their relationship to the next level. Colt meets her the next morning and says, I, I want to be your boyfriend. And Vanessa eventually agrees. I want you to be my girlfriend. I guess I'm ready to be your girlfriend. I'm a little apprehensive. So what makes me so special? What would you say to going to see a counselor? About our relationship? As soon as Vanessa and Colt become boyfriend and girlfriend, the first thing she says is we need to fix our relationship, which is probably the fastest I've ever heard that be said in a relationship. And she says, well, I think we need to fix it with some counseling. And Colt reluctantly agrees. Hi, Vanessa. Hey, Brad, how are you? How doing? Are you? Yeah, good to see you. I'm Colt. This is Colt. Hi, Colt. It's a good way to start a relationship as friends. That's awesome. I mean, have you been cheated on before? So at the therapy, Colt and Vanessa are doing couples therapy. And they meet the guy who's like, hey, have you ever been cheated on before? He's basically like Dr. Full with slightly less hair, which shouldn't be a thing, but okay. The, the sex thing, like he wants it way too much. He says once a day, but it's usually like he can- I'll settle for once a day. You want it three, four times a day. I'll settle for one. And now we come to the underlying issue of Colt and Vanessa's relationship. Besides the fact that Colt is a cheetah cheetah ass eater or pumpkin depending on what you want to say he's also someone who really likes getting sensual down and dirty in fact he likes it multiple times a day this man has an insatiable appetite for the tatas give me some of your tots he's a cave dweller he likes parking his car in the garage he likes sex and there's nothing wrong with that but apparently he's wearing people out and he's also freaking me out because i don't get it uh, whatever Honestly, I get bored in relationships. I get bored in, in pretty much anything that I do. I have a hard time dealing with that. So I just look for something else, something new. Colt then says that he gets pretty bored and that's his problem in relationships. Whenever he's with someone, he tends to want to find someone new. And the therapist basically says, what you need to do is try this exercise. Let her come to you. You keep initiating it, let her come to you because sometimes being away or creating that tension creates attraction. And that is what Colt tries to do. The next scene shows Colt in the bed. And again, I just wish they would just put some two, just titty tape, just around the nubs, please. Hi. 
Hey. Looking like a snack, mama. <laughs> Looking like a snack, mama. Of course you think about food in the bed, you goddamn troglodyte. God, man, that's the American body. When I look at the American flag, I think of a uh, bald eagle and Colt's body. Jeez, like oh, that's mama. beautiful. You look like a snack. Yeah, you look like you ate one. You've lost so much weight. Did he? Where did it go? Where? Where is it? I can't find it. Bit, you know, he's a beautiful man. I got. He's a beautiful man. I, I got nothing wrong. I got nothing to say. He's a beautiful man. We all got a different body type. This is beautiful. Nothing wrong with it. I just wish they'd cover up the titties. Have I? Yes. Don't lose too much. Oh, God. Why? 90 Day Fiancé, why? 90 Day Fiancé, gods. Please stop making weird sound effects. I want to show you something. Okay. I picked up. The next day, Colt comes downstairs because he lives with his mom, so it's not like they're doing it in another house. Ugh, you know, I can just imagine Debbie listening with like a cup towards the door, like, ooh, ooh. Oh, she's moaning his name. Anyway, yeah, like I said, the next day, he comes downstairs and he says, I have a ring for you. But he's not talking about Debbie, he's talking about Vanessa, insinuating that, yes, he's thinking of proposing to her. I'd like to ask you for your blessing to ask Vanessa to marry me. Are you out of your fucking mind? There's a lot of risks involved with this proposal. It's literally, again, been a couple weeks. Why is it every time you feel that you're in the heat of the moment, you need to marry someone to prove something to them? Marriage doesn't solve your problems, cult. Please. This is not going to solve her relationship and trust issues and also your insatiable appetite for the sensual activity. You got, you got to fix that before you can put a ring on it. I could be pushing her away, but... Vanessa thinks I have commitment issues and I'll just end up cheating on her. So this rain will show her that I'm serious and I want to spend the rest of my life with her. That's that's such a, this is what I hate about the idea of marriage is that whenever you have a problem and you can't solve it in like girlfriend, boyfriend or like that relationship, you're like, let me just marry them to show them that I'm serious. I mean, yes, it proves that it's the ultimate commitment and I get it, it's amazing. I mean, look, <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I don't think it solves the problems that may actually ruin the relationship or marriage. If you have these deep underlying issues, you might want to fix them before heading to Wonderland or Neverland and actually doing your weird stuff cult. Like you, you gotta fix those. If the relationship issue revolves around trust, marrying the person doesn't necessarily prove that you trust them because you were in a relationship with another girl and still cheated. Therefore, the only difference would be there's a ring on your finger while you're doing it now. I don't think it necessarily proves to her that you are a faithful person. It just proves to her that you want to be officially a cheater at this point. Oh, I talk all the fucking time. It doesn't matter if it's right now or during sex. I don't know, I like to stimulate my brain. You know, like what if we were in a graveyard at night? Uh, this man literally said, while he's doing it with a girl, he'll be thinking about other things that stimulate his brain. Like, what if we were in a graveyard? What are, what are you even trying to insinuate, bro? Is she dead? Are you trying to be like, I'm a skeleton lover? Is that what you're trying to do? You turn from a nympho to a necro at that point. Why would you even imagine that? Why would you need to imagine things that are already happening? What is wrong with you? This is t Cult is the type of person to go to a movie, watch a movie, and imagine another movie while watching that movie. What the hell is wrong with you, bro? Really spooky one. Abandoned. Stuff like that. Or like the Civil War. You imagine the Civil War during sex, do you? The South will rise again, I guess. Oh, shit. All right. Hello. My name is Shannon. I'm your fairy queen, and I'd love to welcome you to come live your fairy tale. This is <sighs> beautiful. Oh. This is interesting. Uh, Colt then takes Vanessa on another date to a role play place. A little dungeon type beat. Not that kind of dungeon, not R. Kelly stuff. Again, a thoughtful date, proving this man really does care about Vanessa. And if he just did that over time and gave this woman time instead of rushed in, like Colt normally does, she would have probably understood because every time he takes her out on a date, she seems to be more soft and caring towards him and be like, oh, okay, I, I get where he's coming from. 
I think that it takes understanding time and patience, especially in a relationship. Like, if she's not trusting you, you can't fast track that. You gotta earn her trust by doing things to earn her trust. You can't just put a ring on it and be like, it's done now. Now we're good. That's the cult way of doing things, is saying there's a problem, I need to fix it right now. I'm not gonna actually put in the work. Wanna play dress up? <laughs> can we wear these? Yeah, it says you can. There's entirely too many shirtless cult videos in this series. This is too much. There was one in the last one, and that was too much. This is, there's three now, that's three too many. Actually, this is pretty sexy, dude. It's a little dance. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Look at that. My lady. My lady. Hey, sexy. Hey, I like those underwear. I just got them for this trip. You like them? Yeah, I quit YouTube. That's a fucking, I'm out. I don't care. I'm not done. I don't need this in my life. What the? I don't know why I do the things I do to myself. I didn't need to see this man pull out his thigh and flex it like he's uh, on the cover of Playboy magazine 1983 issue. Oh my God. Goodness gracious me, man. Do they make pants in your size or something that reaches to anywhere close to the knees? I'll buy you some pants, Colt. I promise. I, you just say the word, buddy. I'll, I'll Venmo you that money. Please just wear something that covers more than just your ball sack, bro. Please. Yeah, they're really yeah. soft. You look great. Yeah. Mm hmm. Jesus Christ, Colt. <laughs> why? Why? What the hell is purple and avocado? Green, like, um, what? <sighs> Does Debbie watch these videos in the background? Like, that's my son. Look at his ass. Just like mama. Like, what? How about a quickie? How about no? I think what we had this morning was a quickie. Vanessa and I are going on a picnic, and I have the ring with me, but I'm not sure if I'm going to propose or not to her. Oh, yes, I forgot. Yes, Colt, of course. Master plan is to propose and all his problems will go away. So he does that. But in lieu of doing that, he also remembers food exists and has to do stuff like this. Oh my god, he swallowed it. When I was, she was talking about me and how she loves being with me. And how can I not marry her? How can I not at least ask her to marry me? Well, you could, but you could wait, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, come on, bro. Please, Colt. I, I just, I don't get sometimes his incessant need to do things impulsively. I, I love impulse stuff. I love it. In movies, it's great. But the problem is, movies yell cut, and the real actors go home, snort cocaine, and then fight with their spouses because they're not happy. Like, come on, Colt. It's not everything. is not a movie, bro. I know it's crazy. I know it's impulsive, but I have to follow my heart. Are you happy? I am. This is so relaxing. We have problems, right? Wow, that's just, you're just leading into it. Are you happy? Yeah, no, it's really relaxing. We have problems. We have problems. We got some, we admit it, we got some big issues. Big tissues, big issues. If you've got an issue, here's a tissue. <laughs> Vanessa? What the f are you doing? <laughs> Jesus. Uh... Want to get married? Damn, if why every f***ing time? He always does it like the most casual shit I've ever seen. It's like ordering a burger and they're like, hey, what would you like? Do you want to marry me? Bro, can you just get down on one knee? Will you make me the happiest man in the world? Will you change my life forever? Will you be my wife? Something like that. You want to get married, bro? <sighs> every time, Colt. Zero for two, buddy. Hope that fits. Oh my god, seriously? Yeah, take oh. it up now. We could. We have problems, so and this is the right time for you We're to gonna ask? We're going to have problems throughout our entire life, I promise you. I don't want to do it. So, Colt gets down on bended knee and is like, I want to get married. And Vanessa sort of talks a little bit of sense into him and is like, not really, bro. Not really. I don't, I don't know if it, it might be too soon. Remember how I cheated on my last husband? kind of weird uh it's also only been two dates usually by the third date they ask do you want to go back to my place you're asking me do you want to move in have a family and never leave it's kind of scary and she's right to do so but colt 
the only time I've seen him ever try and charm or persuade someone is into either sensual activity or, or marriage. He's somehow good at that. He's bad at saying the thing, but good at convincing you to do the thing. Want to get married? No. I'll tell you, I'll tell you all the perks. You and me, forever, baby. Just give me a chance, one chance, one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever want. Mom's spaghetti is what's cooking in the kitchen if you marry me. I want to marry you someday, but that doesn't mean I'm going to. Would you be willing to wait about a year or so if that's the time limit I have on it? You're worth it. Yeah. You're my fiance now if you say yes. So then Colt compromises and, and is like, well, you know, let just say yes, we'll get engaged at least. And if you just say yes, you'll be my fiance. And he convinces Vanessa after two dates to say, yeah. Yes, I'll be your fiance. We're engaged. We're engaged. Engaged, beautiful ring. And it's prettier than Larissa's, I like that. <laughs> Ooh, toxicity at its finest. Whenever you compare a ring of yours to like your exes, oh God. You know, this is the thing. Whenever you meet someone really good and you start a relationship, you got to start by telling them the truth or having that communication foundation. Just tell them everything. Even if it's hard to hear huh, at the start, it builds a, a solid foundation. It's more biggie to be sure. And that is the end of the season. They end up getting engaged. So Colt and Vanessa are happy and they get engaged. The thing is, months later, they have the tell all. And that is where my favorite host of all time, Shauna, who's actually named Sean, and I've been getting it wrong the whole time, sorry Sean, talks to them. Sean, as we all know, is a host that doesn't say much, asks questions, and doesn't seem to listen to the answers. But I think it's really important to show the tell-all of 90 Day Fiance, to show you just what happened to their relationship and how everyone else reacts to Colt and Vanessa. So we're gonna watch that as well because I think them ending on marriage is kind of not really telling us the full story and we need to see this as well to get the full scope of how I think their relationship is going to go. It's a lot. It takes a lot to satisfy me. Like it's not a just a lot. Like I I, I So I, you have an insatiable appetite for sex. Yes. I mean, that is just that's the guy whenever you think of like who's the sexiest man in the world, three people. Mr. Bean, Michael B Jordan, and of course, Colt from 90 Day Fiance. That's that's the top three, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's just how it is. What are the stories that you're telling during sex <laughs> when you're like talking and talking and talking? Yeah, if she wants to pretend to be whatever, you know, that's fine. Role play, that's great. I love that. But I don't care about that specifically. Talk to me like I'm your mom. Call me Debbie. Say my name. You know that's what they're doing. Uh, like, it really is just the energy. But what is the right energy? You complained about Larissa, you complained about Jazz, you complained about me. What is the right energy? Okay, so it seems like they're not as happy as they should be. And I feel like I'm missing some context. This is how it started, by the way. I didn't just turn it on, it was like this. They just started fighting. Clearly, Colt has some sort of issue, and Vanessa's right. I mean, it's it's probably not their fault. Those are just... These three women who probably are doing the right thing. Colt just wants some extra stuff. I don't know. I really don't. The other day, I, I hopped in the shower with you. I started giving you a blowjob. And God damn it, woman. <gasps> I'm sorry. What the hell? What kind of 90 day feel? <sighs> they really, they really tell it all on the show. My God. I just didn't feel like you had the right energy for it. Oh. Wait, she didn't like. He didn't like it. I'm like, what the f do you want from me? Okay, like, first off, she's never done anything like that before. What blown you? <laughs> okay. And then it's just all of a sudden, I think we're having like a fight, and then she just comes in and starts doing it. I'm like, this is odd. That's not odd. That's the best way to make it up. What is up with you, bro? That is how your girl is. Like, I'm really sorry. In the shower. Oh. It seems like the whole series, every time Vanessa wants to do anything sensual to him, he's like, get away from me, hold my hand, not my ball sack, buddy. I don't know what to do, because half the time Colt's trying to just be like, don't get away from me. And then when she actually does it, but when she's not doing things to him, he's like, you're not, you're not giving me enough. I need more. Look at my body. I need it. Oh, baby, I just wanted to suck your dick. 
Okay, have you moved in together? Yeah, okay. This is this is why I love Sean. She's hearing the stuff. She's like, I just wanted to suck his dick. Yeah, okay. So did you guys move in? Sean, she's saying some of the most crazy... Th I've never... This is live... This is reality TV at its finest. Some of the most rowdy sh I've ever heard in my life. And Sean is like, well, on the cards here, it says you dyed your hair brown. Tell, tell us about that. Get back to the thing, Sean. Let her talk. She's clearly got something to say. Everybody, let's welcome Debbie. Vanessa is the one for Colt. For now. My only fear is that, um, Vanessa, you might be marrying Debbie and not Colt. Ah, my boy Big Ed's back. Hey. And he actually is better at giving advice than taking it. Uh, for once, as usual, I, I, yeah, I agree with him. Debbie seems to insert herself into everything, including her son. I know how it sounds, but it should sound like that because she just, she, she's overbearing. It's kind of weird because uh, Big Ed has so many issues, but when it comes to other people, he can dish it out. I think your mom needs her own independence so she can live her life. And I think you guys deserve to have, you know, your, your space, you know, your private space. Oh, well, I mean, it's no different than if he had a roommate. Out of nowhere, Debbie appears. She's sitting there on 90 Day Fiance, ready to start some trouble. And she says, it's no different than if you have a roommate, except your roommate is not the person who made you, because that would be weird. <laughs> it's kind of different when your roommate literally whooped you out of her private parts. So that's that's not, not many roommates do that, Debbie. No, it really isn't. I don't tell him what to do. I'm Look, I'm going to be honest. I think it's time for Colt to get off the nipple. And you need to stop fighting. Oh, you. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> you. She, yeah, as usual, a lady of class. She's just coming out with a very nice... That's just beautiful. Love that. Thank you very much. You get much. off the nipple. Why don't you go find somebody your own age instead of this precious little girl here you're trying to... Yeah, you're, you're an ass. You want people to amazing. think you can get a when beautiful gonna, young girl so it makes you happy? Colt? This is probably where Colt gets it from, and I'm, I'm really sad. But also, it's pretty evident that Colt gets a lot of his shortcomings from his mom, Debbie. Because, as, as you know, however you want to look at Debbie, she's not the best. She has her moments. Of course, she's a caring mother. Who isn't? But loving her son and being overbearing are a very fine line, and she seems to cross it very often. She also cannot handle criticism and also likes to victimize herself to the point where she just feels like she can get anything done. She is manipulation nation at its finest. And when Big Ed even comes after her and says, maybe you should do this, she goes straight on to attacking Big Ed. Maybe you shouldn't date a girl this age. And maybe he shouldn't. But this is not the right time to say it, you know? Debbie's really deflecting right here. You have no right to talk about dating. Hey, hey listen. But Debbie, it's not your job to fight his battles. Oh, I want a 20-year-old. So people say, oh, this guy can get a 20-year-old. You don't care about how you feel about somebody. This is definitely not a healthy way to argue. Uh, whenever people start doing that voice, you know the arguments like, that's it. Hey, I think maybe you should let your son make his own decisions. I think maybe you should learn to shut the fuck up. Why don't you find love instead of somebody that's a kid? Listen, you baby him, you coddle him. You don't know. He's Vanessa, do I baby Colt? <laughs> Vanessa was like, oh, oh. <sighs> Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Do I? <laughs> ah, here and there. <laughs> ah, I feel good. <laughs> ah, here and there sometimes. <laughs> the business. one thing my mom did. So you yeah. had your mom on the TV. That is your business. Yeah, but th th was she talking trash? Was my mom, mom. You talking like your, 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 your mom don't know too much you. about you, Ed? Just stay out of it. But, but, yeah, that that's gonna get it. That's the one, Colt. Colt's like, yeah, everyone's screaming. Let me do this. Now I'm going to really have him hear me. Hey, Ed, you suck. Because you're getting upset and you're frustrated because your son can't get off the nipple. Like, you, you, you got to let him grow How up. How is he on my nipple? Explain that to right me. Right here. 
What this has nothing to do with you. This is just don't don't. It's not a it's not a literal thing, guys. How is he on my nipple? Do you see him on my nipples? Come on, guys. Do you see Debbie? Debbie? No, no, no. How is that involved? How you are that coddling work? him. You are babying him. He's never going to grow up. And your mother doesn't baby you by brushing just... your hair, putting the mayonnaise in your hair. <laughs> she doesn't do that. Okay. Shaving. Ah, yes, the mayonnaise. I I had repressed that memory from all my memory banks, and now it's brought back up. Yes. Big Ed puts mayonnaise in his hair. Uh, we are not supposed to talk about mayonnaise. I don't shave my son's back like your mother shaves your back. She said it like a bad thing. Like, I don't shave his back like your mom shaves yours. I just shave his balls. Among other things. <laughs> your mom isn't as close to you as I am with my son. Okay, first of all, I don't all, brush his hair and put it on a ponytail first of all, like it went, your she mother was, does. So all, maybe went, you should get off the damn nipple. First of all, it was a paintbrush, <laughs> not a razor. She saw you naked in the shower. I don't see cold naked. She saw you naked in the shower. I don't even see him naked anymore. He doesn't even want to show me. Why would you say it like that, Debbie? Please stop saying it the way you're saying it. I have no right to give advice, dude. You are about the lowest life. You can't even know. Sean. Sean? Uh, uh, repeat that please. This is the thing with Sean. She has no bearing on anything. People will be fighting, getting rowdy, saying the worst stuff. And she needed a producer to be like, Sean, Sean. And instead of looking at her ear, she literally puts her hand on her head as if it's telekinesis and is like, I'm getting something. Wait, hold on. Hold on, guys. The message was for you guys to shut the f up and me to actually intervene. Come here for show the truth. Menace is a bitch. For coach change, he needs to die and born again. Well, I'm glad we can be here to call out Cole and Debbie and Vanessa on their lies. Oh, God. So then part two of the tell all is something that I also wanted to show because they bring Jess and her partner, Brian, and they come out and instigate as well on Colt's life. Brace yourself. Yeah, she's over him. That she's not over him. She'll do anything for me. I'm here for defend myself. Yeah, yeah, classic Brian. He has nothing to say. He'll just laugh and look at people with those dead salmon eyes of him, like he's been dead for a long time. Shit about to me and shut up. Off. What? Shut up. Wait, what did you say? Shut up. What did you say? Shut up. We're not here to talk to you, Brian. I hate to be rude, but you are literally the least important person in the in this whole show. Literally, I think the people who are behind the camera are more important than you. We're not here to talk to you. Nobody's here to talk to you. Just, just shut up. No, I don't have to shut up. Okay, wow. Yeah, wow, Sean. Could you take control? Could you just tell Brian? Could you unmic Brian and actually have these two talk? No, 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 then then no thank you. <laughs> two weeks left on her visa before she was going to have to go back to Brazil. You say. I have a question. When Colt sent his little dick to 10 girls when he's with Jess, is that cheating? Nice. Oh, Brian, as usual, the classiest man in the room. I have a question. When your son sent his little dick to many girls, did, how, how'd you like? Did you? Was that cool? Without batting an eye, she didn't even defend him. Yeah, my little dick son sends his little pee pee off anywhere, and I'm proud of it. This is a weird conversation. Okay, so Cole did I never that said when he... he didn't cheat on us. I said he did cheat on us. So he would he... listen when anybody talked, or you Easy. just keep talking. He admitted it. He apologized to you. Deal with it. It's over. You can live okay. in the past forever. Why? So then Debbie starts screaming and defending her son. Debbie will never admit that Colt is wrong because she's just not built that way. Uh, on one hand, I think it's sweet that a mom cannot see faults in her son. On the other hand, it's like setting your son up for failure because it's harder for him to see the flaws in himself if a mom can never give you that tough love. I think you, should, you owe it to uh, people you love to be honest with them, whether it's easy or hard. Sometimes you need to do that because that's what real love is, I feel. I feel like protecting people is only part of it. Sometimes you need to give them that TLC. And oddly enough, TLC is the channel we're watching. So that's funny. But yeah, Debbie is now basically gaslighting Jess, who is weirdly in the right, but has to scream to just get her point across because she unfortunately is in the position of someone who's been cheated on and just wants answers. And I completely understand her situation. I don't like the person she's with, but I get what Jess is saying. Get over him. My God, he's happy. You're happy. What's the big deal? <laughs> and, and just like that, Debbie says something that makes sense. Every now and again, Deb still will say something that makes sense. 
Colt's happy with Vanessa. You're happy with Brian. Everyone's happy. Justice in the world. Let's go our separate ways. This is why exes don't keep meeting up with each other after they get married. It's like, eh, remember when we used to f Hey, I apologize. What do you want to do? I want to go. I want to go to Vanessa. And then Brian interjects himself again and starts annoying everyone, including myself, because yes, Debbie is an old fart who uh, can get on everyone's nerves 90% of the time. But hey, there's one thing that I probably was raised to do, and I was really honestly getting triggered at this point, is when this dude was telling Debbie to shut the F up. When you're a person, let alone a man, telling an older woman to shut the F up, it just, it's like such a low point in a character of a man, and I'm just looking at him like, bruh, you lost all respect for me. This is why I don't like him. And it's Debbie. Say, you. Debbie, shut the f up. Let's have Colt talk. No, like, I don't, don't, don't tell me to I shut up. No, you know, right? right? right, we're not going to be going at it. You not. Shut the f up. Hey, 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 don't talk to like that. He calls her a B word. Bitch, shut the f up. I don't like you. Who even invited this loser onto the show? God damn, I hate him. Fuck it off, that's my mom. Yeah, don't talk to her oh like that. God. She's a grown woman. Yeah, there we go. Colt finally standing up to people. Knock it off, Brian. That's my mom you're talking about. Come on, Brian, stop. What is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? And then I think Debbie realizes what's been happening. She was busy fighting, screaming. And then she took a second and she's like, oh, victim, <laughs> victim complex. I'm an old lady. I'm just a poor old lady. Look at these saggy bags. I'm old. Come on. You're gonna say that to me? Debbie switching up is never, it'll never get old. Because you're well, you got class. I don't care how old you are. Class you have to treat, treat everyone with respect. You're not respecting me, you're not no respecting me, you're not respecting no one. Yeah, like, okay. You can't look, just chuck anyone how you want just because you're old. Yeah. I don't care. Come on, stop chunking on me, bro. I don't know what he said. I, it sounded like you can't chunk on anyone because you're old. You. You could do what? Sit here and stare at you all night. Go for it. Okay, Debbie. Hey. Hey, Brian. I could sit and stare at you all night, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. <laughs> hey. Isn't that a great foundation to build a relationship? Being with somebody that cheated on... I, I just... That's the problem I have, and that's probably why... We don't care about your problem. No, no, no. No, Big Ed's right. Just because he's a very D-bag sort of person 80% of the time, it doesn't mean even a douchebag is right, you know, a couple times. Like they say, even a clock is right when you stick it up your ass. I don't think that's the saying. But um, you know what I mean. Big Ed's right. You can't build a foundation on a foundation of lies. Like I said at the start, then you get that house of cards. Nobody wants that. It's going to fall, and then you're just going to have to undo a lot of things at the top. The more cards you have, the more you have to pick up when it falls. You know what I mean? Why don't be honest? I, I ask you a hundred times. You, you have someone? No, it's just friends. And f*** all the time in your house, and you know not sell nothing. You need to learn respect, you woman. You and Vanessa need to learn about him. sisterhood. Try to learn about that. Yeah, Sean, it would be a really nice if you just... Anything, anything. I lied to her about covering up for Cole. I did not know that they were t sleeping together when I oh, that's true. told her. Yeah, that they no, no, Debbie didn't. Know. I never, we never, I never told my mom about what we were doing. I did. I would you? Would I just? I don't know if I've ever told my mom. Hey, mom. I've been fucking a couple girls. Like, yeah, it's pretty good. You, you proud of me or what? What's, what's happening? I just, I, I don't, I don't know what this relationship is, but I don't. It seems not okay. But uh, yeah, Debbie didn't know that Colt and Vanessa were having a relationship as far as I know. And I f also, just like Jess, find it very hard to believe these two goobers were not making enough noise that Debbie didn't suspect, oh, they might be doing something. I just don't believe that Debbie had no idea or no inclination. She's a bit of a nosy neighbor, if you will, so. I just don't see why they're even talking. And her husband's so upset with Debbie, like... At this point, give Debbie a f thank you because now he's got her. Like, and move on. Uh, Blizz is right as well. I think the... <laughs> it's It always... Isn't that always funny? That when it's your relationship or when it's you, you find it very hard to change certain things about yourself and, and the relationship. But when you look at other people, you can spot their flaws and look at the changes and correctly identify and assess, 
oh, this is what needs changing, and then you guys will be fine. Liz is right. Uh, you should be happy, Jess. You have a great partner. Oh, well, you like him. This was the calm after the storm, not before it. So the sunshine and rainbows happen after the storm. All right. Okay, Vanessa, you said that you were covering up for Colt. Yeah. Colt, you, you lied, lied to me, me. during that tell -up. He lied Why? to me, too. I lied to a lot of people, Sean, let me tell you. <laughs> Why did you lie to me? I like how sh the only time Sean ever asks questions, it's about her. Well, Why did you guys lie to me? I know you're lying to each other and everybody else in the relationship, but me. Still ashamed. I, I shouldn't have dated Jess at all. And we just kept going and going for whatever reason. That's why they're good together, because both trash. I've lied in the past. They were trash. They were, I, I'm gonna agree with Jess, they were trash. Uh, Jess can feel a lot of things. She can be a jealous person. You can be all these bad red flag traits, but when you're right, you're right. He's out of line, but he's right. I mean, in any other situation, if Je Jess was a jealous person and Colt wasn't doing those things and Jess was just an angry, stuck up person, then I'd be like, oh, that's not really good. But it's warranted in every single aspect. So I feel so sorry for this woman that she'd put her time into this person and this is what she got out but at the same time uh, yeah i mean colt's trying to move forward it's it's kind of a hard situation he's trying to be the better person but it's it's sort of hard when jess isn't letting him either so both of them that yeah they gotta move on that's it i've lied a lot throughout my life uh -huh. for whatever reasons why are your hands up like that like a boxer sean she's like yes mm-hmm Vanessa, how do you feel about that? I mean, here it is, Colt is admitting that he has a habit of lying yeah. to people. No, I'm aware of it. She's fine with that because she's cheating on her husband. She's okay about cheating, so she don't care. She's okay about cheating. She shit on her husband. She shit on everybody. She make dump cake. She shit on that. Yes, I cheated on my husband. I yes, I did. Fresh. Like, uh, Vanessa doesn't cheat. Like, uh, yeah, I guess, I mean... What? Wait. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, no, on. I move you. I just want to understand why everybody's not honest with me when I ask. That's why I want to understand. This is the thing. When with at the tell all, you have to break this down. If you're gonna come here and be an honest person, just deserves the truth. And it's sad because like you you go back in time and you're like, why didn't you just afford me the truth? Why didn't you tell me? The answer is people make mistakes because sometimes they're scared and sometimes they're selfish because they don't want to feel that hurt or pain. And it comes back to bite them. So I'm I'm. I feel sorry for Jess, and I feel sorry for Colt for even doing it. Uh, he should have definitely not done it. And those are repercussions that he has to face. But look, on the end of the day, Karma was kind to Jess, and she found a good guy for her. She's not sexy, she's not like attractive, and that's what he said to me. How nice of you to share that. He but, hurt you, but, now you're gonna hurt her. I can't huh? talk. So then, as usual, Debbie starts fighting with everyone in the room, including Jess. Uh, her husband, Brian, comes to the rescue, the real, literal white knight. Oh, yeah. oh you butt out. You butt out. out. I'm talking to her. Right. Yeah. You butt out. No, you butt out. Why don't you butt out? You can see him. Uh, Jess is like, just stay back. He's, he's a literal child. I think his brain capacity operates at 2 to 3%. All of you, be quiet for like... 30 seconds. Colt finally, finally takes a stand and he uses two hands this time, ensuring everybody in the room hears. It's not just the, hey, Ed, it's shut up, everyone. And then he actually explains his situation. I don't care about my ex or her new husband. Love my mother, but you do kind of butt in a little bit. <laughs> I love Vanessa, right? I find her very attractive. Things you might remember half hardly. That's the lie you take don't from care. me for I believe don't in you. Don't care. Perfect. Great response. Great response. Don't care. You're not in my life right now. Shut up. Shh. Shh. That's it. Whatever you say only makes it this far. You could have your opinion, sure, but it doesn't make it into our lives because you're not in it. You're with your boyfriend and your person. A cult actually takes the time to say this. So good on him. He then messes it up by saying this. I said I'm sorry. Goodbye. Move on. I love Vanessa so much. I married Vanessa and didn't tell anybody in this room. Holy sh! Wow. What do you call it? A hundred and eighty day fiance now? Oh God! This man is—he got married. He did it. He did it. That's the end. Of, they were engaged. Now they're married. They did it. They really did it. <laughs> Wife number two. Congratulations. And the last one. Oh. And you know what I say in every video? I just marriage does not fix everything. 
you can see the problems. There are so many problems in this room. Jess and Colt is a problem. Brian and Debbie, Big Ed and Debbie, everybody's having problems with everyone. Marriage is not going to fix it, Colt. Look at this. I think with that said, everybody just needs to part their ways and live your, your marriage. We call it peace, okay? You and I call it peace. Why? What the hell is happening? We call peace? What? They're calling a truce? No more fool shit. You, I don't give shit about I don't want nothing to do with you because you're a rat. But you and I, peace. Congratulations. Little, one of those little chapels? Yeah, right? the chapel by the river. I, I guess they got married, and, 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 and like I'm saying, there's no, this doesn't fix anything, it's just a ring. Like, people don't, people aren't that stupid. They're not just going to be like, oh, you're married, everything's okay, right? That, it's just a coincidence that Debbie and Jess called a truce. A lot, a lot of years, it's just very simple, very basic. Debbie's going to hate Colt because she doesn't know about the marriage and she needs to know about everything, so she's going to hate him. Wow. In private. Was Debbie there? Debbie no. was not. Debbie no. didn't know. Debbie didn't know. I didn't tell mom. She didn't even know. She's gonna hate Colt. She's gonna hate him. He told no one. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys hug? What the fuck? Oh, oh. oh. that's why you should have told me. I should have. <laughs> okay, I guess Debbie. Oh, this is great. Debbie and Jess made up, and Debbie and Colt are okay. Uh, what about Brian? Brian said that he hates. Colt and a, he's a gaslighting piece of <laughs> So what about what about you, Brian? I'm shocked, you know, like this is the first time I've any respect for you. God damn it, you can't do anything right. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. I left a tit at home, Ed. <laughs> Suck that tit, <laughs> asshole. All right, and wait, by the way. Well, at least Jess is gonna hate Vanessa because like they she's the one who cheated and stuff, so that's probably gonna be a thing. Proving my point, which is marriage doesn't fix things. Jess and I just I called peace. You and Jess just called peace we just did. now while this was yeah. going on? While well, that was going on, we get Jess and I okay. called peace. We got, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so okay. Yeah, this is just they're just hugging. People do that. That's okay. Fixes all your problems, huh? Wow. Look at the peace made. Wifey number two and hubby number two. Yes. That's it, right? Just husband and wife will do. <laughs> I don't think Ed likes me. <laughs> so this show ends with everybody making up abruptly. Proving my point, or disproving it, I guess marriage can fix anything. Wow. I I don't know what to say, guys. I, I was going to come here and be all preachy with you and tell you that you need to fix your relationship issues before you get married. Turns out, as soon as you get married, everything just becomes okay. So, I'll go F myself because I was wrong. I guess, I guess once I'm in enough financial trouble and I have someone I hate, I'm just gonna marry them and things should be great from then on. This, this is just, it goes to show you, don't trust a brown man in a beanie wearing a bandana over it. Cause that's just weird. In all seriousness though, I think this was a wild episode, a wild saga of Colt and Vanessa. They actually have another saga and I want to take a look at that one because I think there's more twists to come. But for now, this is a good stopping point. <clears throat> Genuinely speaking, I think that, you know, don't ever rush in. You can't rush in. It's not a good thing to do and it causes more problems. At first, obviously everything seems fine because the initial stages are people are happy for you. But once that wears down, then the real problems start to rear their ugly heads again. And it looks like a momentary peaceful moment, but that doesn't seem to last if the underlying issues are still there. So hopefully these two fix it. I don't know. I'd love to see them. This is the first time Colt ended on a marriage and not a breakup. So congratulations to him. But let's see where it goes from there. There's going to be trouble brewing on the next episode. Until then, that was Leo covering 90 Day Fiance. I'm going to sleep because it's 1 a.m. I don't know why I filmed it this time. Until then, take care of yourselves. If you have any other problems, just get married, guys. Hey, I'm just